Hey, babe, Britlin here. I am interjecting right before the start of the episode because I recorded this a couple days ago and immediately upon hopping onto my one on one client sessions, I noticed that this topic of allowing is massive rippling through the collective right now. Each and every one of the clients that I've been meeting with have had, to some degree, stuff going on with allowing. And because of this, I said, hmm, anytime I see things witnessed in my little microcosm of a world, I like to extend it outward and really witness, really gain awareness over the social media realm and reach out to my web collective community. Turns out that a lot of you have stuff going on with mental stagnation, built up air energy, anxiety, troubles with allowing what is. So because of this, I created a little freebie that I want to extend to the Sacred Sister podcast audience, and it is a 11-minute guided visualization and embodied energy release practice. So if you would like to receive this 11-minute guided visualization, all you need to do is shoot me a DM on Instagram at Britlin Rising and let me know. Send me your email and I'll send it on over to you. I don't do these little freebies too, too much, but they are on my heart recently, just creating little bits because... I know what a big deal this kind of stagnation can feel like, and I want to offer help in the way that I can. So if you'd like to receive this, send me a DM on Instagram, and otherwise, I hope that you really enjoy this episode. I hope that it lands on your heart in the way that it needs to, and I trust that it's exactly what needs to be released today. With that being said, let's dive in. Mm. Hello, sacred beings, and welcome to another individual episode of Sacred Sister Podcast. My name is Britt Lynn, and in today's episode, I'm so excited to share something that happened with me recently, what I noticed about it, what it helped me lean more deeply into, and really this episode is going to be all about allowing really noticing when we're giving ourselves a hard time about things, especially as women, especially as women who perhaps come from people-pleasing or perfectionistic backgrounds. I know that's where I come from. (laughs) It has been a very deep program that I've been unfurling, and really the unfurling process has shown itself to be Instead of these really um, like groundbreaking, earth-shattering moments, what I find is a lot of this unfurling really looks like teeny tiny steps, teeny tiny pieces of mindfulness, of little breadcrumb activations. They really feel like tiny movements in a direction more so than, you know, these great big monumental moments. Although whenever we stop and reflect maybe after a day when we felt an activation happen, we can gaze back and reflect on the day and it may feel super big. (laughs) It may feel super big because a lot of times those teeny tiny steps do feel like great big deals. Great big deals. So this is what happened. And I've been so excited to record this episode for a couple weeks now. So, okay, we, Curtis and I, my husband, have some friends, and we know them from the climbing community out here, and our friends were getting married. Um, They were supposed to get married last year, but they had to reschedule their uh, wedding for this year because last year was wild, and so much got rescheduled last year, but the wedding was happening in Colorado, so... Curtis and I were super excited to get out to Colorado to spend a couple days climbing and to just get out of town, take a trip together, and we were really excited for this. 
Now, I don't know how many of you (laughs) can relate to this, but especially for myself, what I notice is that when I've known people for a long amount of time, right? I've known people for years and I have so much changing inside of myself all the time. I have this part of me that wonders like how I'm going to show up the next time I see these people because I'm like, they don't even hardly know like this side of me, this spiritual expansion side. There is an entire facet of people that know me and that have known me for years that don't even know that I'm a personal transformation coach and that Honestly, I don't even really care (laughs) to (laughs) let people know because it is such a, um, it's such a vulnerable facet of my persona that I don't even necessarily feel like sharing it with a lot of people unless I know that it's going to be held, that people are even interested to know about it. And... (sighs) I feel like I know there are some of you listening to this right now who are like, me too. I don't even know how to communicate about this. And it's not so much that I hide it. It's just that I don't, I don't really find the benefit in like, you know, proclaiming from the rooftops. I have a podcast. I'm a coach. I have online courses. I'm launching programs. I'm this. I'm that. Because a lot of people are not even necessarily connected to the spiritual expansion side. And I'm like all about the woo to some people. And it's just a sacred part of my life that I don't really feel like sharing, but with the people that I really feel like sharing it with. So be that as it may. I was wondering, I was thinking to myself and saying, how am I going to show up? Am I going to like deepen friendships with some of these people that I've known for a long time? And I started to notice that I was getting anxious about it in the weeks coming up to the trip. I was, you know, so consumed with like, oh my gosh, how's it going to go? What's going to happen? And of course the wedding came and I could feel this anxious energy about me. And I really was a wallflower the entire evening. And I congratulated the bride and groom, and I saw some people that I hadn't seen for years. And everyone knows me as a model. For 17 years, modeling has been the majority of my income. So people know me as a model. And it's just such a funny experience because I'm so not a wallflower in most arenas of my life. But after the evening was said and done, I was like dancing on the grass by myself. Curtis was DJing the wedding, which was really, really fun. And everyone was on the dance floor. And I live to dance. Dancing has been such a mode of expansion for me the last couple years. And I traipsed onto the dance floor one time (laughs) for like two minutes. And I was just so uncomfortable. I was like, I don't want to dance with anyone. I don't want to make eye contact with anyone. I just want to be in my own energy. I don't want to talk to anybody about anything. (laughs) And then I kind of traipsed off the dance floor and like went onto the grass and danced with myself and took my shoes off and I was grounding and really trying to just breathe through the anxiety that I was feeling. And of course, afterwards, I opened dialogue with Curtis and I was like, oh, I'm just so unimpressed with how I showed up tonight. (laughs) And he was like, why? Why? And you know what he said to me that helped me start shifting the entire thing? He said, why do you give yourself such a hard time? Why do you set such high expectations for yourself instead of just showing up and seeing how it goes? He's like, no one expects you to show up in any certain type of way. And that, brothers, sisters, sacred beings, showing up to this episode right here, right now, listening to my voice, is a sentiment that I want to present to you. Wrapped in a golden bow, in a sacred package, how often do you set expectations over yourself 
that you may feel are coming from the external realm, but are really purely sourced from within. And why? Why do we do that? Why do we do that? The process of allowing ourselves to just be, to simply, purely be who we are without setting expectation over ourselves can change one's life. As soon as he started prompting me in these ways, it's like I was crying too. I was literally crying, just like, oh, I feel like I'm doing so much in my life. I want to share myself with other people, but I also want to know that it's going to be received. And because I didn't know whether or not it was going to be received or how it was going to be received, I chose to be a wallflower. And hey, whatever. Maybe I could have shown up and been like, I'm this, and I'm doing this, and I've been growing this, and this, this, this. Just sharing with people what expans- ex- pieces of expansion have been happening in my life the last years since I've seen them. And maybe it could have gone really well. But that's not what I was feeling in the moment. And that's okay. Okay. And for some people listening to this episode, I'm sure maybe some have already clicked away because this seems like such a mundane sentiment. But for the people that are listening to this right now, like our hearts are connected. You know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) And for us, it's so real. And these are the types of experiences that I really am so excited to have segments like this to really expand on. These internal experiences that have so much power and say over our energetic bodies that actually don't service us well. That are these pieces of mental chatter, of mental anxiety inducing fear, fear of not being accepted, fear of being rejected, fear of not being liked. For myself, I know really speaking these words right now and breathing into that sentiment, questioning myself and saying, oh, is that what was being activated that night? The answer is absolutely yes. I go back to my childhood days. Oh my gosh, I thought so-and-so was my friend. They don't like me. So-and-so was talking about me. You know, and Even saying this out loud right now, I feel like sometimes I am to be like an expectation is placed over me that because I'm a coach and because I'm a podcast host and because I speak on healing and and I speak on expansion that I should be past this stuff, right? But it's like, no, I just totally want to eradicate these types of notions that I'm supposed to have things figured out, and probably some people are listening to this and they're like, nobody has that expectation over you. (laughs) So here it is. It's like this podcast and these individual episodes are such a brilliant opportunity for Hannah and I to show up exactly as we are. And for anyone who's been listening to this podcast for any length of time knows that I'm pretty much the queen of vulnerability. I cry easily. I have no issue really displaying and putting my heart on my sleeve. And this is the notion that I wanted to bring here to this podcast today about allowing, about really giving ourselves permission to be exactly who we are, the sensitive souls. And as we come into awareness over the expectations that we may be subconsciously placing over ourselves, mm, that on that next inhale, we can breathe into that pattern. And as we exhale, we can truly let it go. And I invite you to join me in that right now. Inhaling, breathing into a pattern that you're noticing in your life that doesn't serve you, that's self-induced. And on the exhale, shedding, letting go, releasing. (sighs) 
really pressing the breath closed. Inhale one last time. Really fill up. And exhale, truly let it go, beloved. It is so powerful to come into the awareness of the way that our self-talk speaks to us, the expectations we place over ourselves, what we allow and do not allow within ourselves, and hey, no judgment. Radical self-compassion is what we practice here at Sacred Sister Podcast. Truly coming into the awareness over how one functions is 85% of what it takes to get to a new place. Because with that awareness from that space of immaculate clarity and awareness, we can choose differently for ourselves. We can say, oh yeah, why am I doing that? Really allow ourselves to question from a space of non-judgment, purely from the witnessing observer state. And before I sign off for this episode, I want to attribute this Uh, way of approaching self-association to my yoga teacher, Annie Carpenter. I remember going to my yoga teacher training and I love the style that Annie teaches in her smart flow method of yoga, which is where we're doing a two hour practice every morning as we go into our teacher training and she will tap people on the back and say, okay, you, you, you in the class, she pauses class and says, everyone come over here. And depending on what movement principle we're focusing on that day, whether it's within the spine, whether it's within the arches of the feet, whether it's within where we're holding our weight in the, um, in the hip girdle, in the shoulders, like for instance, You know, she would uh, use me as a prime example for scoliosis because I have a curvature in my spine. So we'll, we'll look at, and before we look at, she says, okay, everyone, we're looking with eyes of compassion. These people are not broken (laughs) because when you're zeroed in on, and when you are, um, when someone is making a piece of your body, like holding awareness over it to a group of people, it can be very vulnerable. It can be very raw because so many people are witnessing you and seeing you. And just from the awareness of we are looking at this person with loving eyes of awareness, it really releases all of those feelings of judgment that we can have, of brokenness, of victimhood, of like, oh my gosh, why me? We can really like release that, let it go and understand that we're simply gaining awareness over ourselves. And then from that awareness, boom, we give ourselves permission to shift that pattern. This is one of the ways that I really love how beautifully the um, physical practice of yoga asana beautifully translates into spiritual expansion because Yoga asana, it's so easy and plain to see and simple to say, place more weight on the outside edge of your right foot in this posture, in the physical body. So that's in the physical realm. And when we look at things in terms of energetics and in spirit, we're talking about something in a very similar way. We just can't see it. (laughs) we're talking about our patterns. One's a physical pattern, one's a spiritual pattern, an energetic pattern. We can talk about them in exactly the same way. And for me, it like helps me to really make sense of a lot of the um, associations between the different bodies, mental body, physical body, emotional body, spiritual body. It really helps me to draw it back to the physical body with yoga asana practice because that's the modality that I was first trained in whenever my eyes were just opening to this realm. It was a really powerful experience, and I hope that it speaks to you as well. So please let me know. Are you in a space like that right now in your life? Leave a comment for me in the comment section of this a podcast streaming app that you're listening to this from. I'd really love to know what it is that's moving and shaking, shifting in your own life, 
what you're drawing awareness over and how you would like to shift it. The freedom and expansion that you feel that it will bless your life with. Mm. We hold the keys to our own freedom. We are so much more powerful than we allow ourselves to be a lot of times. I hope you have a really beautiful rest of your day, beloved. And until next time, this is Britlin signing off. (laughs) Namaste, beloved.